Hello, everyone. My name is Tim B. Green, and this is Crush It Club, episode 31, Where to Get Inspiration. I don't know why I always have to adjust at the beginning, but I just seem to. Trying to get that title behind me. I'll eventually learn overlays. Until that happens, deal with it. This is what you get. So this is a topic that's really near and dear to my heart. And because I'm a lifetime inventor, literally a lifetime inventor for as long as my mom can remember or could remember, I asked her many years ago, so when did I start destroying toys and trying to understand how they worked? Because it started out when I was young as destruction. And she said, as long as I can remember. So I've been doing creative stuff and some destructive stuff um, since I was a young child. So for me, creativity is second nature. But what I've realized over the years and looking into things, there's an excellent book. I can't remember the author's name right now, but it's called Group Genius, which really brings it out and really describes uh, um, that genius, as we call it, tends to be a group effort, even though many times a single person gets credit for it. Let's talk about the light bulb. Well, you know, we all think Thomas Edison, or some of us think Thomas Edison, but that would be wrong. He was the person to have developed and commercialized it. In the book, they talk about how he bought some patents from some Canadians. I'm Canadian, so I'm proud of that. But that, in fact, the light bulb, among many other inventions, most of the world changing inventions was reliant on the work of others, the same way that Newton said, if I have seen so far, I, it's because I stood on the shoulders of giants. That's true. Like anything comes from somewhere. It doesn't come from nowhere. Excuse me. So to that end. The short answer to the question, where can you get inspiration? Where does creativity come from? Where does inspiration come from? And I'm speaking mostly in terms of uh, social media content, but it really applies to anything. Your environment. So this is a good reason that you should have a varied and rich environment. The reason you should pursue things that interest you, even things maybe that don't interest you, but you know nothing about. Anytime you can sort of break that pattern, get that pattern interrupt, um, it's new exposure to your brain for new ideas. I get a ton of inspiration for physical products from going to my local uh, dollar store. It's called a Hyakuen store, Hyakin, which just means 100 yen. But that's really where it comes from. Your Most people get their inspiration from their environment, like for these for these daily shows, I don't get it from nowhere. I have a lifetime of practice with creativity, but it still really comes down to the same thing. It's what I get from my environment, what I get from my daily experiences. Even if they're seemingly mundane, I would say the last five episodes came about based on an interaction or an experience I recently had with someone or um, something I did that jogged my memory or brought up the proverbial light bulb moment. So that's most of it. Now, I'm going to get a little neuroscience -y on you here and say, while some people would think it's you put it out into the universe and you think about getting it all the time and that works, I'm going to say, well, no, that isn't actually how it works. There's no science to support that. I can't disprove God or anything like that, so I won't waste my time trying. But I can prove that a couple things go on. First of all, your brain and your body are kind of a two-way system. It's what one of my university professors called a false dichotomy. It isn't like, here's your brain and here's your body. Your brain has nerves or your whole nervous system. Your central nervous system tends to be your brain and your spinal cord. And your peripheral nervous system is all your other, other um, nerves in your body. But if you think of it as a whole system, which it really is, um, a lot of researchers have shown that your gut has a lot of neurons. 
No, this doesn't mean trust your gut, un except under specific conditions, which I'll cover in another video. Most of the time, your gut is absolutely no smarter than the rest of you. So if your brain doesn't know it, your gut doesn't know it either. Typically, we'll get into detail another time. But here's the thing, because your body and your brain are basically one system or, or are interdependent, here's where my argument is in the, in the center of most of the work I do, which is around every fucking day. People spend all their time doing mindset and other things, and I believe very much in mindset. I talk about it probably more than I talk about anything else, but mindset has to become action so this goes along with the environment part of the environment is your immediate environment literally your body so by me doing a video every day my brain and my body and in particular one area in my brain called the reticular activating system it's the part that sees lots of stuff in the environment you see a ton of stuff in your environment which your reticular activating system goes, this is important for survival or some other reason. So I'm going to let Tim see that consciously. I'm going to let any person see that part consciously. It was always there in your environment. Like my glasses touching my face. I don't feel them. Why? It's not important to my survival. My reticular activating system goes safe to ignore that stimulus. So I never feel my glasses except when I talk about them. Same with you. So this goes for creativity too. It, so by me saying every day I'm going to do a video and thinking about it and at least as important, but probably more important, the doing of videos, the doing of creativity, engaging in creativity, doing actions like this video, the physical side influences <clears throat> The mental side of the central nervous system therefore my reticular activating system gets the message and that message is notice things that can be used from the environment outside of myself notice things in the environment or in experiences that tim has that may be useful fodder may be useful inspiration or topics for his daily videos so by doing the daily videos and by engaging in and thinking in and as i like to call it swimming in it the stuff you're trying to do that tunes your ras to notice things you didn't otherwise notice it isn't the universe sending you messages it's your own brain saying stuff that was previously ignored is now relevant because you have deemed it so consistently ideally efd okay so that's really what this episode is about Bottom line, your environment and how rich you make it, how you treat your environment, how you treat your everyday, everyday experiences is, is, hey, can I use that? And most times for me, it's the reverse, not because I'm special, because after doing this 31 days in a row, my brain is literally in the habit of identifying next themes, next topics. And I've already done this with 161 articles, so I got the practice there too. But it's the same thing. It's I have an experience or something in the environment clicks off, like making peanut butter reminds me of a video I long forgot and have since re-recorded. That's that's all it needs to take. So make friends with your reticular activating system, your RAS, somewhere kind of in there, I believe. And pay attention to your environment, think about, have the mindset that I have everything I need, I simply need to recognize it. It's a great memo for your RAS, telling it, okay, I need material. You can use PLR, but I'm gonna be honest with you, I find most PLR is to be garbage. It's usually written by non-native speakers and it's usually pretty bad and it's usually pretty inaccurate on the scientific or authoritative side, which means jerks like me are going to say excuse me what you just said is completely wrong and out of date you want to be an expert try to actually be an expert you'll make mistakes but you know be the person that you're expressing yourself to be do the action think about what you want to do and it will happen for neuroscientific reason 
My name is Tim B. Green. This has been Crush It Club episode 31, Where to Get Inspiration. Bye for now.